In this video, I go over how to calculate the coefficients for a Fourier series representation of a function. Then we use these coefficients to build a function that we can then plot or animate or even explore. And I do this for two examples, one that is a symbolic closed form solution and one which is a numerical approximation. Let's get started. Okay, there are many ways to provide a Fourier series representation of a function. I'm going to use this particular definition of the representation. You can obviously make changes. X sub f and x sub 0 are the endpoints. Here are the coefficients a sub n and where b sub n are defined. To use Maple to solve this problem, let's write it out as we see it. Restart a underscore underscore coefficient is going to be our function for calculating the coefficient for term number n given some function f which is going to start at x sub 0 and ends at x sub f colon equals let's basically write this all out 2 divided by the absolute value sign of x underscore f minus x underscore underscore 0 close times the integral from x to 0 to x f of f which is a function so we have to pass it some dummy variable which in our case is going to be x times cosine of 2 times pi times n select divided by the absolute value of x final minus x initial times x close parentheses tab x there we go and that and that's our a coefficient to do the b coefficient we'll copy and we will paste and we will label it b and wherever we see sine we will now uh, cosine we will now put in sine now let's apply the way to calculate these coefficients and build a Fourier representation of this particular stub function here goes from 0 to 1. Notice I use no approximations. This is exactly 1 half, not 0 0.5. This is 5, not 5.0. All the terms are whole numbers. So what does our function look like? It looks like this. Let's build each term. A underscore underscore 0 is calculated using the A coefficient function which we will pass n equals 0 our function which is big F our initial value which is T sub 0 and our final value which is T sub F and turns out it's 5 what about individual numbers well we could put 1 2 3 4 in but well, let's see if we can get a general expression for a sub n and this is why I used whole or precise in numbers a underscore underscore n is defined as a coefficient where we're going to calculate for term f of function t f um, for function f at from t at 0 to t f this is an answer it includes the value of n we know n is a positive integer let's simplify a sub n assuming n is a pos int all terms are zero which is not surprising since the whole thing doesn't look like a cosine starting at t equals zero let's find the b terms And we will help it by saying assuming n is a pos int. And we get a nice simplified expression. At this point, we can now actually write out our entire solution, which is a closed form solution, a sub 0 over 2 plus the summation of b sub n's times sine of 2 pi n times t over the difference between t final and t initial, which is 1. At this point, we would like to ask, can we use the value for a sub 0, a sub n, and b sub n, and build a function that we could use for plotting, animation, or exploring? Obviously, we cannot summate 
sum all the way to infinity. So we'll have to make this function up to some number of terms. I've written out the code in order to make our function, our Fourier series representation. Clearly, the first thing I did is I made the a of n function and a of and b of n function. And then I wrote the whole thing out. For our particular example, we know a sub n's are all zero, so this is really a, a superfluous, but it gives you the general idea. Because our solution is symbolic, I can use the summation. When we do a numerical solution, I will have to use the add procedure instead. Let's test to see if this works. For 10 terms at the value of 0 0.25, we don't get that close to zero, but it is definitely near zero. With 100 terms, now we are down to 1.5% close to zero. Now let's plot. When we plot our function and the Fourier representation using 10 terms, we get this image. As we can see, the approximation of the Fourier series is not terribly good, but it's not terrible. If we increase to 100 terms, we get a better approximation. We can calculate the difference, the absolute value difference, between our function and the Fourier representation between the initial point and the final point. We want a numerical value, so I make sure that the final point is a numerical value. And when we do, we get a very small number. If you try to put in 100 terms, you will discover the inefficiency of our solution. We can do another video on how to improve this efficient inefficiency. Another way to examine the quality of our Fourier solution is to animate it for different number of terms that we use. I'm going to animate a plot of the two things. However, I want to make sure that the Fourier function is not evaluated before n is provided. So I put the Fourier function expression between the two single quotes. If I click on this, I can hit enter, I can push play, and the number of terms that we use is increases from 0 to 1 to 50. Finally, playing the same game as before, we can explore the plot between the two functions for some number of points, even include a legend, and by using the explore function, we can make n a slider parameter, which allows us to visually see how the number of terms affects our approximation. The final example is not symbolic, but rather numerical. Here is an example from uh, minus pi over 4 to pi over 3 of the tangent. It turns out we're not going to find a closed form Fourier series approximation to this function between these two points. A reminder of how to calculate our coefficients. They look like this. We'll enter that. And this is how we calculate the actual individual coefficients. Hopefully, we're getting a symbolic solution. And the answer is, it works for the first one. It doesn't work for the others. So what we do is we first calculate the floating point approximations to our endpoints. And then we use those to build our function, G Fourier, for which we are going to add up, rather than sum, the coefficients, and each coefficient is going to be an individual n value, and therefore this will be a numerical calculation for both a and b. Ignore the warning here that says n is, dis is implicitly declared local. Plotting both our function and the Fourier representation for 10 terms, you can see that it's a pretty good approximation, but not great because, again, the endpoints. If we increase to 100 terms, again, we can get a fairly good approximation, except for the endpoints. Hopefully, with these ideas, you can also animate and explore using the numerical sol approximation solution. And in the document, I go over what happens if you try to look for this tangent function at the extremums. Finally, Professor Lopez of MapleSoft has gone over a much more extensive discussion of using Maple to do orthogonal function representations, many approaches. I'll leave a link to this video down below.